This is the third time I'm filming this video now, and the first two times I didn't plug my microphone in correctly. This video approach is a little bit different. I'm talking to you guys about fragrance etiquette. Things that have happened that should never happen, and yet they do. By no means am I an etiquette expert or an elegance coach, but I was raised with a lot of, you know, manners and following etiquette and I really love Anna Bay's channel and the School of Elegance. This is one of the only YouTube channels that I really watch whenever I have spare time. So this video is kind of inspired by that approach, except it has nothing to do with elegance and everything to do with etiquette surrounding fragrance. Things that are just no-nos. And these are all based on personal experience. Some of them sound wild like how could this ever happen does this even happen it does and they have all happened to me and in some cases i was the culprit so i have a whole list let's get through this the first thing of course is overspraying avoid overspraying especially if you're going out to a restaurant anywhere with food a lot of fragrance in the air can make food really unenjoyable so limit yourself to i would say four to five sprays don't put 20 to 30 sprays like that is just absurd don't do 20 to 30 sprays when you're going out to a restaurant please you think you're helping your fragrance last and sometimes it does help but within reason right just be reasonable with your overspray and if you feel like you need to overspray a fragrance for it to last do it a couple hours before you're actually going out do not put your 20 to 30 sprays the moment you're walking out the door another thing that should be avoided is spraying fragrance in the car before somebody is about to get into your car this happens with ladies this happens with guys mostly guys are the perpetrators here you're going out on your hot tinder date you think this is the perfect opportunity for you to marinate yourself into your sauvage the moment before she walks into your car please stop do not pull that fragrance trigger this is not enjoyable for anyone it's suffocating a car is a small space that much fragrance in the air is not not a vibe Spray it before you leave. Don't spray it in the car. And I've done this. I've done this myself when going out with girlfriends and I've done this with cheap fragrances, which was particularly embarrassing. Like I'm talking Beyonce heat. I was in my 20s and we were going out like clubbing or whatever. Comments did get made. Embarrassment did happen. It should never ever happen. I also sprayed my signature scent at that time, Gucci Envy Me, which was less obviously offensive, but still, when somebody's getting into your car, they don't want to smell an overdose of your fragrance, so don't spray in the car. And speaking of cars, little trees. Little trees will be the death of me. Three, four, five little trees in your car. <sighs> that's out of this world. Limit yourself to one little tree and follow the instructions on the packet. You actually have to leave it in the baggie, which doesn't look as nice, but that's how you use it and it contains the fragrance. My hubby works with and around cars and the little tree situations that he sends me pictures of sometimes are really out of this world. Once a car drove by and I could smell his black ice down the street. I'm not exaggerating. Your neighbors should not be able to smell your black ice as they walk by your car. So limit yourself to one little treat, ideally in the back seat on that little handle. And that would be, you'll be golden. This next one happens to people who have big fragrance collections and with friends. Friends of fragrance people, please don't rummage through their collections through their fragrance cabinets, through their perfume trays without asking. Of course, we're all happy to share our fragrance collections. We're all happy to share that passion and have you explore, but do it with grace. Like grabbing things, putting them back not where they belong, that's super rude. Don't do that. Place it where it belongs. Don't go so wild that you forget where the fragrances belong. Or if you don't know, say, hey, sorry, I don't remember where this came from. Like. Really, it's it's so simple, but people do this. People do this. They'll rummage through your trays. They'll rummage through your cabinets. Fragrance people, has this happened to you? Am I the only one? Please let me know. But the worst thing for me, and this goes not only for fragrances, is when people rearrange your things. Rearranging your fragrances, like putting it back not where it belongs, drives me mad. And asking for samples. That's also related to people with big fragrance collections. People will ask for samples and it's amazing to share fragrances. I love sharing my fragrances with my friends, with my family, but it has to be done at an appropriate time. Here's a little anecdote for you. 
My son just turned one and on his first birthday, my grandmother asked me for fragrance samples. She, this woman asks for fragrance samples anywhere, anytime, like all, she's only there for the fragrance samples, no matter what the occasion is. And I think that is so inappropriate. So I said no, and it was uncomfortable, but like, that's not what we're here for. If we were hanging out casually, absolutely. But if you're there for an event, a dinner party, a birthday, anything like that, and you know it's your fragrance friend, that's not the time to ask for perfume samples. For people who work in sensitive environments like hospitals, you guys should really be limiting yourself to small amounts of sprayage, if any at all. So for example, when I was giving birth, one of the nurses that was taking care of me was wearing a very strong fragrance. It wasn't bad, but it was overwhelming and it had a massive cloud. And that's like, it was very distracting. You know, like mothers have just given birth, they're going through pain, through anxiety. They have tiny newborns with tiny little lungs that shouldn't have to be dealing with that. So yeah, I feel like every nurse that I know tells me that you're not allowed to wear fragrance and yet it happened. This particular nurse also happened to have really long fingernails. So that's a whole separate issue. Like I have no idea how she was getting away with it, but it was something that I think it's, it's very bad fragrance etiquette. I think you guys will all agree with me that should just never happen. If you are so inclined to wear a fragrance and you work in a sensitive environment, limit yourself to a couple sprays of something that could pass as maybe just cleanliness. Yeah, I would just limit the sprays if you really, really need to wear something. And for people who work at boutiques, niche boutiques, department stores, fragrance spaces, the way that you approach people that come in to that boutique is so important. The worst thing that you can do is ask them, how can I help you? Nobody wants to feel like they're being sold. Nobody wants to come into a space and feel like, you know, the shock of now they want me to buy something. Nobody wants to feel that. Now I'm giving you guys sales advice, but coming from a sales background, like I have an interior design background, but I worked in a lot of sales. Now I'm a realtor, like I'm, I'm teaching you sales tactics. You don't want that approach. You want to have somebody feel welcome when they're coming into your space. Like, hey, feel free to have a look around, explore, if you need any information on anything, I'm here for you. Something along those lines, right? Like nobody wants to feel that intensity and hovering. Hovering is the worst thing. I'm just thinking like, imagine walking through an open house and this realtor is following you through every room. You're gonna wanna leave. It's the same thing in boutiques. Like I don't, I don't stick around in a store when somebody's hovering over me, especially with fragrances. With fragrances, you want the freedom to sniff, to explore, like, it's transportive. You wanna see if that fragrance does something for you. So having that freedom and knowing that that person is there for you to help you if you do have questions is the best approach. The best experience I've ever had in a niche boutique was at Scent Bar in Beverly Hills when I visited one time. And it was just like, it was perfection. Like it was so easy. It was so helpful, very relaxed and like kudos to those guys. They did such a good job. Another thing, and I saved this one for last. This is the worst thing that can happen. It should never happen. People that work in boutiques, friends, husbands, wives, never spray anything on anyone without their permission. Like you should never be ambushed with a ksh. <laughs> Just ask, say, hey, I have a fragrance I think you might enjoy. Do you want me to share a spray with you? Don't ambush them. It's comical. It should never happen. And yet it does. Anyway, that's it for today. Please share with me any of your fragrance etiquette no-nos, any situations that have happened to you. Let me know in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Stay with me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.